Right, so this is a, um, a GCSE level video on quadratic equations, um, thought of by some as being a very tricky, even mystical topic. Um, it's not too bad, really. So let's have a have a look. Um, look at the, this is a quadratic equation here. X squared minus 5X plus 6 equals zero. OK, so I, I think if you can understand get the idea of what we mean by squaring an unknown number um, <clears throat> and um, maybe you've done some factorization as well you should you should be um, at a good starting place anyway to understand quadratic equations and how we solve them so what we're doing when we're solving this equation as with any equation is we are looking for values of x such that this left hand side equals the right hand side. We tend to write quadratic equations like this with all the terms on one side and um, zero on the other. And that's for a good reason. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we'll see, see these things in, in a slightly different form, um, but um, they can still be quadratic equations or rearranged to look like this. So yeah, so we're looking for values of x so that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Um, <clears throat> well, let's have a look for, for starters. Then, I mean, if we were to try x equals one and substitute one in here, we're going to get one squared minus five times one plus six, and that's going to be equal to two if we work it through. And um, <clears throat> that's not zero. Uh, so one, therefore, is not a solution to this equation. What about x equals two, right? Two squared minus five times two plus six. Here we go. Four minus 10 plus six equals zero. So yes, this works. This is a solution. X equals two is a solution. Right, that's good. Uh, but um, hang on. try x equals three, and we're going to get three squared minus five times three plus six. That is also equal to zero. And um, <clears throat> so there are two solutions. But that's, that is, uh, is, is sort of quite normal and acceptable. That's what we, we, we kind of look for in a quadratic equation. Um, not always, but very often there are going to be two solutions. Um, uh, <clears throat> so and in this case, uh, that is what we've got. Now, how have we got it? Well, really, we guessed it, didn't we? <laughs> we just tried a few uh, um, a, a few different uh, possibilities and uh, kind of struck lucky fairly quickly. Um, so we guessed it. And um, all right, we're going to do we're going to we're going to try different ways. But um, just to say that methodical guessing is actually a valid, valid me method of solving equations. Uh, including quadratic equations. Um, random guessing like I've just done isn't really a way that we would do it. It could be extremely time consuming. Um, but methodical guessing is a valid method and we we, we tend to call it uh, numerical methods or, or something similar to that. Let's go on. So um, as I've just mentioned, Quadratic expressions are presented in this particular form with all the terms on one side as an x squared, typically not always an x, x to the power of one term, and then zero on the right-hand side. But uh, they may be disguised. This, for instance, is, um, is a quadratic equation. And if we rearrange it, well, in actual fact, if we rearrange it, multiply by two and collect the terms on the left, we get this same thing. And this looks a bit different as well, but again, this is the this is the same equation as this one. Okay, so uh, so beware of uh, of that. Um, now we've got a number of techniques for solving them, and including uh, factorization. And if you've done any sort of factorization of, of, of linear terms, then you know this uh, shouldn't be. Um, too complicated for you. Uh, completing the square um, is a good one. The quadratic formula, yeah, we have a formula for solving um, quadratic equations, and um, it almost seems too good to be true, doesn't it? Is that actually 
we can just plug some numbers in and it actually gives us the answer so why why do we bother with anything else um well i would say actually that um that it's actually less preferable to to the to the ones above um uh, and it will again a, a bit more later but the quadratic formula is more or less the same thing as completing the square and we would tend to use factorization if we can actually factorize it with whole numbers if not we may well be completing the square um, also numerical methods as i've just said um is a methodical way of guessing really um I very often use a calculator for that as well so okay um so let's have a look at this one i've kind of sort of done this one in re reverse really so if we if we look at this so there's two things multiplied together uh this in the brackets here this is a number ultimately i mean it's whatever the number is is four more than the thing we want to find out okay and this one on the right is two more than the one we, the, the number we want to try and find out but if we multiply this out, which means that every item on the left multiplies every item on the right, so we've got kind of two times two, four different four different possibilities. I, I put the the uh, the face in to uh, to help remind me which you know what's got to be multiplied together. Um, so we've got the two eyebrows, uh, we've got the mouth, and we've got the jaw here. Um, and I know that looks like a nose there, doesn't it? A couple of eyes and ears. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so if we do that, x times x, then we got 4x, we've got 2x here, and then the other eyebrow is 4 times 2 equals 8. We get this. If we collect our like terms together, 4x plus 2x gives us 6x. Um, so that is what we've got. So if we started with this and we wanted to factorize it, we'd end up with with this now why do we want it factorized uh well um let's have a look at the equation like this x plus four to x plus two equals zero that's how we would say it um <clears throat> now when you think about it this we've got two numbers multiplied together give give us zero so one of those must be zero all right so either we've got x plus four equals zero or x plus two equals zero and if x plus 4 is 0, then x must be minus 4. Minus 4 plus 4 equals 0. Yep. Or x equals minus 2. So we have two solutions here, minus 4 and minus 2. And we can check these in our um, in our um, expression here. And we'll find that these uh, both of these evaluate this expression to 0. So... Um, so given any equation of the form, and this is what we would call the general form of a quadratic equation, um, <clears throat> where these are the, the coefficients, the multipliers of each of these. Um, on this particular one, we've got A is 1, B is 6, and C is 8. Right. Um, <clears throat> we would want to ask ourselves, can we actually factorise the left hand side and the answer is well not always or at least not always easily enough um to to do it with factorization but let's let's just carry on worrying about factorization for the moment right so we'll look at this thing again which factorizes to x plus two into x plus four and we notice actually that if we multiply the two by the four we get eight yeah if we add the two to the four we get the six which is here well that's not surprising is it really because the constant term the number we know no x is uh, attached to it is is going to be two times four because that results from that eyebrow there um and then we've got the um the mouth and the jaw here it's going to be two x plus four x is six so um so really therefore what we're saying is that when we actually factorize this we want to find um the two numbers that multiply together to this and add to this so let's have a look at this example x squared minus x minus six and i've written like x plus question mark plus or minus question marks we don't know if the you know either of these is going to be plus or minus 
into x uh, plus or minus back mark let's call it yeah all right so i've used these because obviously i can't use x good as anything so if we multiply these two uh question mark and back mark uh, we want to get minus six and if we add them we want to get minus one all right so at this point you really kind of need to try a few different options you know if it's gonna if there's going to be a whole number factorization then really you're all, you're looking at either three and minus two or minus three and two but since we know that actually these have got to add to minus one as well then that really only leaves us with that option so we can say that this is equal to this factorization here uh, in which case of course uh, as before um, given that equation then um, x is going to be either three or minus two right okay so that's factorization we'll have a look at a few examples just to consolidate that in our minds x squared plus 9x plus 14 here so we want two numbers and multiply together to give you 14 and add together to give you 9 well uh, 2 and 7 will do that um, so x plus 2 into x plus 7 equals 0 giving us solutions of minus 2 and minus 7 um x squared plus 21x plus 20 equals 0. The two numbers multiply to 20 and add to 21. So 1 and 20. Yeah. Um, so that will give us x plus 20 uh, into x plus 1. Solutions of minus 20 and minus 1. Right. <clears throat> and as before, yeah, we substitute those either either of those into there, into that left-hand side. It will give us 0. Um x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0. Uh, well, um, okay, so if we multiply these two together, we're going to get minus 18. If we add them, we're going to get minus 3. So, you know, uh, out of the possible options, that's obviously is the one that works for us, giving us that factorization and solutions of 6 and minus 3. And then finally, let's have a look at this one. Well, this one looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Because it's got no x term in it. Um, although in a sense it has, because it's 0x, you could say x squared plus 0x minus 49 equals 0. Uh, so two numbers that multiply to minus 49 and add to 0. Well, 7 and minus 7, yeah. Giving us this factorization equals 0 and solutions of 7 and minus 7. And incidentally, uh, things of this form are called the difference of two squares. This x squared is a square. It's a square of x. This 49 is a square. It's a square of 7. And uh, it's the difference of two squares because obviously it's, it's one mi minus the other. Um, so uh, these things uh, can always be expressed in this form. Uh, x plus something into x minus that same thing. OK, so that uh, is uh, a bit of extra uh, stuff that could be useful. Now then, um, we've been dealing here with examples where the coefficient of x squared, the multiplier of x squared, is 1. But what if it isn't? And here's an example. 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0. Now, uh, again, if it's going to be a whole number thing, then, you know, this, we've got to have a 2x plus or minus question mark uh, multiplying x plus or minus um, question mark. Um, so where these two uh, question mark and back mark equal 2 and Two times um, two times this plus one. This is a one times this is going to equal five. Now a bit more complicated when it gets to this point, and we're, there's a few more options we have to try. And in this case, it's not too bad really because um, you know there aren't there aren't many many different things. Obviously, you know our 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 
question mark and our back mark are going to be one and two. And incidentally, we know these are going to be pluses because we've only got pluses in here. Okay, so we could try that, doesn't work. But then if we try 2x plus 1 into x plus 2 um, and just test it out, we see that actually it does give us this expression on the left. So this is our factorised form of the equation. And we can conclude from that, therefore, that x equals minus a half, because if x equals minus a half, 2 times minus a half is minus 1, and minus 1 plus 1 is 0 and at minus two for this uh, for this for this part um so these are our solutions um uh, now um now there is a, a bit more of a process for doing this and uh, we'll cover that in a separate uh, separate video but um they they um uh, let's have a look at this one 5x squared plus 19x minus 4 equals zero now what we're trying to get is we're trying to break this down into two parts and in this case we've broken it into 20x minus 1x um um because this helps us uh to our, our factorization um why those two well um all right well we again yeah, we'll come to this but if we if we if we we notice that if we multiply 20 by minus one we get the same thing as five times minus four so uh, and of course this adds to 19x so that's a bit of a clue as to how we we go about it uh, now the thing now is to split these into two pairs and we'll factorize out um well we're going to factorize what out what we can just like when we're doing sort of linear factorization fact 5x comes out of that leaving us with x plus 4 in the brackets minus 1 comes out of this giving us x plus 4 in the brackets so therefore we've got 5x lots of this minus 1 lot of this so we could write that as this um 5x minus 1 into x plus 4 so this is our factorized form equals zero and um, therefore x equals one fifth um, because five times one fifth is one. One minus one is zero or minus four for this one. OK, so, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll look at that method um, um, separately, but um, you may be able to work out how to do it for yourself just just by seeing that example and uh probably worth just having a having a try to see if you could devise the the method uh right so um now then what happens if it won't easily factorize we, we, sometimes an option where we might be able to use a fairly straightforward fraction you know x minus a half into x plus two or something like that yeah possibly um tend to be a bit more difficult to spot actually um but but if you know if you can actually glean that out then that that that, that would be good um <clears throat> but we've got another method um called completing the square uh which is uh, quite nice and what um what we might just think about for a moment if we if we were to square this expression here x plus three squared then um we notice that, well, it comes out like this. And this number here is going to be twice this. So it doesn't matter what what this number is here, in our expansion here, we're going to get uh, we're going to get twice that number as a coefficient of x. Um <clears throat> now of course when we expand this, we're also going to get a nine on the end as well. But um what that does mean is that this x plus three squared minus nine is equal to x squared plus six x. I've just re I've just rearranged this. I've just subtracted nine from each side, and that's that's what we get. So that is equal to this bit. So let's have a look at an example here. X squared plus six x plus eight equals zero. So if we do that little treatment there on our x squared plus six x, and to give us this, then that's good and then but then we have to add our eight on as well of course there equals zero all right so we kind of rearranged it haven't we and then and then if we we sort of put our, our minus nine and our plus eight together we get minus one 
right and all that equals zero so um leaving this one uh, minus one over we got x plus three all squared equals one yeah and we take the square root of both sides and uh, that gives us x plus three equals the square root of well it's plus or minus the square root of one isn't it uh, minus one times minus one equals plus one doesn't it so we've got that and then quite simply we just subtract the three from each side and we get this minus three plus or minus the square root of one so therefore x is going to be either minus three plus one or minus three minus one which is minus two or minus four so those are our two solutions that we've uh, we derived by completing the square and we could take um uh, you know either of those solutions substitute them in for x here and we would see that the left hand side equals zero and that's our check as to the fact that those are our solutions now uh well this this is still an integer example actually so this is uh, you know this is this is not too too uh too tricky but what happens if uh, you know it's a little bit more complicated where we're more likely to use uh completing the square uh, like this one x squared plus 11x minus 5 equals 0 well let's go through the process so we're going to go x plus 11 over 2 that's our being half of 11 squared minus right we've got to take away this squared 121 over 4 in fact and then we've got our minus 5 here right okay and then if what we do is we sort of consolidate uh this lot here because this is minus 20 over four isn't it so and then we kind of add, it, you know, add, add that to, to the right hand side we're going to get 141 over four so x plus 11 over two squared equals 141 over four Take the square root um and uh, we get plus or minus the square root of 141 over two we can just apply the plus or minus to the to to the numerator and therefore x is equal to we subtract my uh, 11 over 2 from each side minus 11 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 141 over 2 so um and that is two solutions of course the plus value of the square root and the minus value um so this that's a little bit more complicated and um but yeah we've we've got the answer we've got it in third form we may need to uh to evaluate that as a decimal depending on the question um but uh there we go it's just a you know uh, a few lines really isn't it to 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 work that through so uh that's good <clears throat> what else right so i said we got a formula to do this and so this is the formula for solving the general form where we've got the coefficient of x squared is a plus bx plus c equals zero. Ah, quite simply, what we do is uh, we've got our quadratic. We identify these numbers, a, b, and c, and we use this formula, x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And be quite good if you can rabbit that off. Although I think you will normally get that as a, you know as a, as a as a formula on your exam paper. Um, but um, um, yeah, not too bad to remember that. I don't think once you've used it a few times. Um, <clears throat> So if we have this particular equation, as we've seen before, we've got a equals 1, b equals 6, c equals 8, uh, then essentially x is going to be equal to, well, it's, we just substitute all those a, b's and c's into there. Uh, so without going through the details, we just substitute that in there, we get this, and then we get minus 3 plus or minus 1, and that's what we got before, isn't it? So, it's going to be minus two or minus four. Now, um, quadratic formula is fine. We don't kind of need it, really. Um, in actual fact, this formula has been done by completing the square on this expression, on this uh, expression here. A bit like this, without going to it 
through it in too much detail. You divide through by A, by this through by A to give you that. We complete the square on the using on these first two terms. We get that. And then we move and all these two terms here are um, constants, which we can um, move over to the other side and kind of subtract them subtract from both sides in other words uh, and then if we put them over a common denominator as well which is, so I've done two steps in one really um, looked like this um, and then a couple of other steps um, working it through just like a completing the square and we get the quadratic formula so uh, this says to me really is, well why bother with the formula why don't we just complete the square um, it's a little bit more reliable, I think, if we just complete the square. We can see what we're doing. Um, quadratic formula seems to me to be a bit prone to error. Um, but um, essentially, uh, you know, it's down to you. It may be that the question is asking for a particular method. Uh, <clears throat> so um, you may not have any choice. But if you do have a choice, then, um, well, you decide your your, your favorite method and um, the other thing about completing the square though is it actually um it's kind of quite useful technique um in other things if we're trying to find um uh, we've got a quadratic curve we're trying to find the the minimum point uh, of it the value of x and y that give you the minimum point then um, um could uh, it's a useful technique there but um, that's kind of for for later really uh right let's just have a think about something called the discriminant so we'll think about this uh quadratic formula this bit here b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant don't ask me why uh, but um that's what it's called um there are three, um, broadly three possibilities. It can either be positive, it can be zero, or it can be negative. Now we've seen in the examples that we've done that when it when it's positive, when it's greater than zero, then this is going to involve taking the square root of something. Um, and because we've got a plus or minus, we're going to end up with two solutions. Yeah. So that's um, that's the really the main case that we've been looking at. But if actually b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then what we're looking for is the square root of 0. This term just drops out because square root of 0 is 0. And we've just got minus b over 2a. So there is only one solution. We sort of kind of, um, we might say there are two roots that coincide that you know that are the same you, you might sort of see that uh, terminology but you know in terms of quadratic equations it just gives us one solution now the other possibility is of course it's negative and um, that would mean that we're actually looking for the square root of a negative number and um, in the real numbers which is what we're interested in at GCSE um, uh, and and a level in fact then um, that would mean that we can't solve this equation there are no solutions there are no solutions in the real numbers although sometimes the terminology is there are no real solutions okay and if you see that no real solutions um that just means that there are no solutions in the number sets that we are interested in uh, for gcse and for a level Okay, so, uh, and here's an example, x squared minus 3x plus 5 looks quite a um, normal, um, innocuous kind of quadratic, but if we actually evaluate b squared minus 4ac, um, then, um, yeah, basically, just skipping across to the right, that's going to give us minus 11. Um, finding the square root of minus 11 um, is not something we can do in the uh, real numbers um discriminant might be useful as well It'll give give us a bit of an indication as to whether or not um, it could be factorized um but normally we use it really to see whether there are zero one or two solutions 
So that is the discriminant, and it comes into um, quite a few different types of problems, uh, particularly A level, actually. But there we go. Um, let's just have a look at a few different ones graphically then. All right. So I've just done these here. And what I just really wanted to try and elaborate on was the idea of the discriminant. Uh, so this red one, x squared minus 3x minus 10. There we go. This is right down there. Look, this, is, this has got two solutions because, uh, you know, this um, shows as the the value of all this, which we often call y, don't we? But it, 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 the value of all these, the, this um, uh, function or, or, or set of uh, algebraic values there. Um, and, um, and if we're looking for where this evaluates to zero, in other words, the, 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 the values of x that give you a solution to this equals zero and we can see them on here can we there's minus two and five so x minus two um uh, minus two x plus two into x minus five it's going to actually work out to this that's how it works so two solutions there um x squared minus four that's uh, that is the blue one um that one that's got two solutions hasn't it uh, minus two and two and this one of course is uh, is similar it's got two two solutions uh, but this one is symmetrical uh, about the y axis yeah i noticed the other, the other one we had was, was involved 49 it was minus seven plus seven same thing well this green one here x squared minus 8x plus 16 now when we look at this we factorize it we look at the, both the, both of the terms both of the factors are the same and that's going to give us um two roots that coincide or one solution yeah which is that now equally if we look at the discriminant of this b squared that's minus 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16, we're going to get 0. So that illustrates um, a discriminant of 0, and it's just got one solution. In this case, it's x equals 4. Um, and then we've got this blue one here, which is the one we just did. We worked out the discriminant as minus 11. And look, this one does not cut the x axis and therefore it shows that there are no values of x for which um this is equal to zero so the equation this equals zero has no solutions in the real numbers okay so that is what that uh, means so uh, just useful to see it graphically i think uh, right um why are we interested in quadratic equations? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, your main reason may well be that you will get some questions in um, an exam and um, being able to solve them will give you some very useful marks. Um, but uh, quadratics do crop up in uh, all sorts of uh, situations um, and um, sometimes in um, in you know, optimization situations or whatever. Um, here's a problem. Uh, now, you won't see this unless you, you do A level, but a javelin is thrown over level ground from the top of a tower. The height in meters of the javelin above the ground after T seconds is modeled by the function H for height. The T just means that it's all written in terms of T. Um, equals this lot here 12.125 plus 14.7 t minus 4.9 t squared t has got to be greater than zero it's a time from you know when we start doing it um and um uh so this uh, this looks a bit weird but i've uh, i've done it on desmos and had to kind of stretch it out so it's got a bit blurred but to but basically give the idea that you know that we've got time along the the, the, the horizontal here and uh, so this is zero. We're not interested in this little tail down here because this has got t is going to be negative and it's 
outside the scope of the question. Uh, but basically, the height of it, it, it kind of goes up, doesn't it? And then it comes back down again. So I'm not going to I'm not going to solve this problem or, um, or really explain it in any um, further detail. Um, but, um, you know, here is a quadratic equation and in order to to actually be able to solve this, then we need to to be able to solve this this quadratic e equation. So, you know, it does crop up in, in, in all sorts of problems. This is just one one example, if you like. Right. OK, so that's quite a, uh, quite a bit on quadratic equations. Um, hopefully that has been um, helpful. Um, and uh, uh, I've mentioned other videos. So uh, if there's other things that you're interested in or you need to refer to, then have a look around, see if you can find any associated videos. But hopefully that's been helpful and I will see you next time.